Today, October 7th, 2023, a new war between Palestine and Israel began exactly 50 years after the start of the Yom Kippur War. In this regard, I would like to remind you of how the previous conflict between these countries developed. Before watching, please subscribe to the channel as statistics show that 99% of people watch videos without subscribing. War of Yom Kippur, a military conflict between the coalition of Arab states on one side and Israel on the other side. The main motivation for Syria and Egypt was to regain the territories lost in the Six-Day War, while Israel's motivation was to finally make peace and end the endless skirmishes. On October 6th, during the holy day of Yom Kippur, Egypt and Syria attacked Israel. As it is today, this event was a complete surprise for Israel. It was assumed that the enemy's troop buildup was related to exercises. Later, this will lead to mass resignations of high-ranking military officials due to heavy losses in the first days of the war. Apparently, this will happen now as well. Syrians, using their numerical superiority, entered the Golan Heights and the Egyptians, with the help of water cannons purchased in Germany, washed away the sand fortifications on the shore of the Suez Canal, after which they successfully crossed it, deepening into the Sinai Peninsula. Israel's counterattacks in the first days were unsuccessful, and the 252nd Armoured Division lost 150 tanks out of 268 in one day. Further, a chain of events occurred, which everyone explains differently. On October 14th, Egypt launched a new attack, which turned out to be a failure. In Israel, they note that the victory is exclusively their merit, while in Egypt, the offensive is called the greatest tactical mistake. Either way, the Arab coalition lost the initiative, and Israel showed excellent skills in adapting to changing conditions. In the Six-Day War, victory was completely won by the Air Force, which first destroyed the enemy's planes and then the defenseless parts on the ground. In the War of the Day of Judgment, Arab countries saturated the army with portable air defense systems and anti-tank guns. The Israeli Air Force was powerless, so the commanders bet on infantry, which felt for the weak points of the enemy, wedged into the depth of the defense and held the bridgeheads until the arrival of the main forces. As a result of such actions, the largest tank battle after World War II occurred. The so-called Battle of the Chinese Farm on a tiny territory accommodated almost a thousand tanks, notably that Arab countries used modern tanks and the Israeli army used equipment from the time of World War II. After winning this battle on October 15th, the Israeli army penetrated the rear of the Egyptian armies and the war took another turn and became a series of local operations that did not decide the outcome of the war. The outcome of the war was decided by politics. During one of the battles, Israel accidentally fired on a Soviet ship. The USSR, which had already been helping the Arab coalition with equipment and planes, refused to negotiate with Israel. At the same time, the Soviet government informed the US government that if they did not take action, the USSR would take very serious measures. Seven Russian divisions were put on alert and 3,000 soldiers were sailing to the shores of Egypt, ready to participate in the war. The nuclear forces of the US and the USSR were raised on alert and Henry Kissinger arrived in Moscow for negotiations. However, even these events did not become decisive. Many historians believe that the main factor in ending this war was economic. On October 17, 1973, the ministers of the oil industry of Arab countries decided to impose an embargo on oil exports to Western countries that supported Israel. Oil prices skyrocketed, leading to the introduction of gasoline rationing in Germany and long lines at gas stations in the United States. The economic factor caused a split among opponents of the conflict. European foreign ministers even issued a special appeal to Israel to deoccupy territories. All these factors led to the fact that the conflict was frozen. On October 23rd, the Israeli army stopped its offensive. At that moment, the country's troops were 100 kilometers from Cairo and 40 kilometers from Damascus. However, there was no complete defeat of the enemy's army. All this made subsequent negotiations quite strange. 
On paper, almost all the world's media spoke of the victory of the Arab Front, but in reality, the losses of the Arab coalition were twice as high as the Israeli losses. The complex of political and economic factors led to the fact that six years later, Egypt and Israel signed a peace treaty. As a result, the Sinai Peninsula returned to Egypt and Israel was recognized by the entire Arab world. All this allowed both sides of the conflict to declare their victory. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel.